Hi, today we're going to talk about safety, security, and crisis management at Patriot High School. One item of concern are electronic devices. As you may see in the slide, electronic devices can be used in classroom instruction. If you believe students are using them inappropriately, you can confiscate them. Some things to be considered if you confiscate a, a phone or any electronic device. Don't open the device. Don't ask the student to open the device or turn the device on. If you do open the device or you see a device that's already open and you see pornography or what you consider to be pornography, do not ever show this to anyone. Close the device. Turn it off. You can bring it to security. You can bring it to the admin team member that will eventually end up in security or the SRO. Showing the device to another uh, person, no matter what their position at the school, could be a criminal offense. At Patriot High School, uh, we have ID badges that are Patriot badges and Prince William County badges. For several reasons, the badges need to be worn at all times. Visitors in the school have badges that must be worn that we allow them to wear over their neck or clip to their belt. And they're distinctly different from Prince William County badges. So a teacher or a staff member must always display their badge. If you forget to wear your badge, you can come to security and we can make a Patriot badge if you don't have yours or if you've lost it. If you lose your Prince William County ID, you should come to me immediately, uh, Mr. Lavely's office, and we can remove your system, your badge out of the system due to the fact that your badge is used as a door scanner for four doors to enter the building Monday through Friday. In explaining the door scanner system just a bit better, the door uh, scanner system will allow you to enter doors 3, 9, 13, and 20 Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you're a coach or an admin team member, the hours are extended. Losing the ID is not so much of a problem as it'll, I can re quickly remove you from the system and we can order a new ID and re-enter you into the system. But please report that immediately. Many of you have keys that are keys to uh, several sections of the building. As many of you have noticed, the school is divided into to, uh, departments and that's how the keys are, um, the building, the doors are keyed. Some items to be really talked about seriously are loaning keys to students. Uh, that's just a prohibited item. Also know that when you come in in the morning or you go to your classroom and you open the door, you're not actually unlocking the door, you're opening the door. So to unlock your door, you're going to have to do it um, manually. We suggest that you always leave your door locked and only use your key to, to enter and, and um, not unlock it manually. And be reminded the keys are department specific. If you're a teacher that roams, just come see me and we will give you the appropriate keys. Also, we have lockers that are assigned in the work areas. If you switch a locker and you switch keys, please come and let us know. It's for a whole lot of reasons, um, specific to security and safety of the building. Um, and, and um, safety of um, safekeeping of your items. When I speak about classroom safety and investigations, it's a wide-ranging topic. If you're going to challenge a student or speak to a student, we suggest that you don't challenge a student either physically or um, verbally. If you call security, we're, we're trained to handle uncooperative students. Um, so if you call us, we'll be glad to come and escort the student to security or admin or, or uh, wherever they need to be rather than have you challenge a student. Um, if a student gets injured in your classroom or whether you're in your care, it needs to be reported immediately and a student injury form needs to be filled out. We can supply those to you. Uh, the the um, student that uh, is being supervised, we need to contact their parents and the nurse or action that's taken we need to put into the form. If we have issues that involve other students we'll be glad to discuss what we can discuss about one of your students but just also understand that be careful when speaking about student issues in front of other people because all issues are confidential. Student lockers will be assigned after students turn in all appropriate paperwork there is a concern that the number of lockers that we have, we're going to quickly exceed the population of the school. 
So our, our policy is going to be that students that uh, would like lockers, we will be glad to ex assign them to them. Um, and then we'll get the information from you and we can assign the lockers as needed. All classrooms have an emergency call button. Many times what's been the, uh, the course of action over the past two years are somebody will bump into the emergency call button and um, we have to respond. What occurs when the emergency call button is pushed is it gets an alert in the main office and the main office will call and listen in on the speaker system. If there's actual emergency, all you have to do is call out. Just speak out to the person and we'll know. Rest assured that when the emergency call button is pushed, security or the um, SRO are notified and they are en route. So if it's a false alarm, such as a book bag leaning, a student with a book bag leaning against it, which is common right before the bell rings, just call us and let us know and we can disregard that. Contact with students has, has been a um, sensitive topic throughout the school system and nationwide for the, ma the past uh, 10 or 15 years. Attempt to never be alone in a closed environment with the student. If, if, you're, if you're mentoring or teaching or uh, speaking with the student in private, try to always leave your door open and be in a position where others can, can be close by. Physical contact can and will be often misunderstood. Hugs and body contact should be strongly dis discouraged. Many teachers have Facebook, Twitter accounts where they keep uh, close contact with students. The, the difficult part about the uh, Twitter account is we have to understand that students have a right of free speech. Things that occur outside of school are very difficult for us to control. If students or, or teachers, I'm sorry, are seeing things that are troubling um, from Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts, they should contact the admin team or security immediately and we can follow up and interview students um, and try to discuss what the problems are. Many times in today what we deal with our students are using Facebook and Twitter to threaten, demean, or bully other students. While troubling, at least we can get to the problem and we can try to stem it by bringing the parties together and letting the parents in on uh, exactly what's happening. Fire drills occur throughout the school year, and once a week for the first four weeks, and once a month afterwards. Know your route and your backup routes. Before leaving the building, wait for direction over the intercom. If you hear nothing after one minute or so, proceed out of the building to your area. I'm going to repeat this one more time. Before leaving the building, when you hear the fire alarm, wait approximately one minute and you'll hear over the intercom directions as to leave the building. Please bring your class roster and display either a red card or green card depending on the status of your students. An explanation of that is you bring both cards and if you have a student that went to the restroom, a student that went to guidance, you will show a red card. If all of your students are present, you'll show a green card. What, what is uh, displayed currently are rally points. And Rally points are important because we have administrators assigned to the rally points where we can uh, get a quick estimation of students that are with you or are in other places in the building. So it gives us a nice uh, count on a quick basis in case we have to move to another location. The rally points are described above. The rally points are also listed in the teacher um, handbook for you to review. Some security items for Patriot High School. The building security, the building opens for teachers from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Weekends are not usually open for business. If you want to come in when Saturday school is open from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., otherwise you're going to have to get permission. You can uh, get permission from Mr. Qualls your administrator or come to security and see Mr. Lavely and we can uh, work out the um, plan for you to enter the building. Another concern is parking. It's very very important for permits to be displayed and please use staff parking lots or parking spots I'm sorry. If, you, uh, if you've taken a look at our parking area there are 600 student parking spots and 
uh, we're assuming that this year that all 600 spots are going to be taken which leads us to the point of students parking in um, staff parking areas which we really don't want to happen and the only way we can discern student from staff is to, to notice the um, the um, tags on the, the vehicles teacher parking is located in front of the building and to the rear of door 13 if, if you'll notice that uh, in the front of the building due to the, the amount of visitors we have we have to leave the area um, marked as visitor open the only spots that the um, staff can park in are near the roadway and closest to door uh, 3 as far as items being uh, brought to school and kept by, by students we have an incredible amount of items that are stolen on a yearly basis we have iP iPhones, iPods, cash, um, other things stolen out of the classroom when teachers are teaching. Encourage your students not to bring valuable, valuables to school. If they do bring valuables, en encourage them to keep them um, out of sight and, um, and locked in their locker if they can. Teachers should use employee lockers for personal items. Lock your doors at all times. I will probably hear that several times um, and when you get to the lockdown procedures you're going to hear it again to teach with your doors locked and um, if you leave your office or your classroom for just a moment it takes no effort just to shut your door and lock it your vehicles in the parking lot should be locked as well if you leave the building for any reason you should sign out and in when leaving the premises that's for a lot of concerns safety concerns if something's happening we would assume you're in the building. If you're gone, we, we would know. Um, and it's much easier to keep uh, an accurate count of who's um, present in the building. At Patriot High School, we have an, a unique emergency alert sound. This, use, this is used for one thing and one thing only. When you hear the emergency alert, you know that we're in lockdown. The emergency alert sounds for three to four seconds you will hear nothing after that. In an actual emergency you won't hear anything with the PA system. You, all you will hear is the emergency alert for three to four seconds. I have placed on a video the emergency alert sound that you will hear. If the emergency alert is sounded, silence the students proceed and then proceed to lockdown and await instructions. Lockdown. If it's uh, it's important and incumbent upon a teacher during lockdown to make their building or their their classroom safe and to keep their students safe. Number one is to keep yourself safe. When I uh, place on the slide to check the hallway, it's totally up to the person in charge, the teacher there at the time. If you'd feel like uncomfortable with looking out in the hallway and bringing in stray students, if you want to just put your students against the wall and go into the lockdown position start um, begin talking your students through the lockdown procedure if it's an actual lockdown you'd want to get as, as low and, and close to the wall as possible and wait for instruction you're going to hear further instruction um, during the uh, school year on lockdowns but you, you should know that instruction stops and students need to be extremely quiet make every effort not to be seen from the window and and just stay as quiet and calm as possible one way to keep the kids calm is to to engage them in um, some behaviors such as taking their phones out silencing their phones um, quietly talking them through what's happening and um, how you would defend yourself in the event that the um, intruder gets to your area a shelter in place means that an outside emergency exists students come in the building and instruction stops an outside emergency could be anything from an armed robbery that occurs in the neighborhood and the um, perpetrator, perpetrators on the run to um, to a police chase that, that that also has the perpetrator on the run a secure the building is a general threat in the vicinity instruction stop or continues I'm sorry and outside activities are canceled for example a PE would come inside um, and, and possibly uh, we would just go around and check all the doors 
and you would continue your instruction. On-site evacuation. In the event that school needs to be evacuated, we will proceed to the areas listed on the map. When you leave the building, it's important to know that you may not be able to re-enter the building. So if you have keys, other items, um, your purse, you should bring them with you as you exit the building along with your roster and your red card and green card. When you get to the location of the evacuation, it's important that you act as firm as you would in the classroom, keep kids off their cell phones, and take roll. As you'll see the uh, on the map, the on-site evacuation is, um, is color-coded and we will do our best. We ran into a problem a couple of years ago, by the way, of the bleachers being a little wet. So if we have to place the same colors, we'll just take the colors and place them on the football field and make every effort to put everybody in, in that order. This is just a template and everybody should recognize that um, we, this may get out of order and nobody should get flustered, nobody should get upset, and we'll just roll with the flow and um, keep things moving. So this would be an on-site evacuation where we wouldn't have to leave the property, we could just move away from the building. If the need to evacuate the property exists, we would follow protocol within the crisis management plan. We would evacuate to Stonewall High School as our relocation school. You must stay with your class and will not be able to go to your vehicles until the situation is resolved. So imagine that we move to our evacuation point and we load the buses and we transfer to Stonewall High School. We're going to have to move to accountability. We're going to have to locate parents. We're going to have to do a lot of things that are um, uh, difficult in nature alone. We're also going to need the teachers to understand that um, they have to be present with their students until all students are accounted for and released to their parents before you could be transported back to the school um, and get your vehicle. Uh, the reasons why we may have to evacuate are many. It could be a, a fire in the building. It could be um, a, a, maybe a release of some kind of chemical. It could be a school violence incident. So be prepared to, to take your things with you when you go, whether it's an on-site evacuation or an evacuation from the property. Below are the evacuation points. These are only areas we have a primary site and a secondary site. Both allow bus access and pickup to be able to exit the property. If you're a student, or uh, excuse me, if you're a teacher who, who gets a duty responsibility, as many of you will, number one is to be alert. We've had incidents where teachers uh, bring their laptops and their faces are basically buried in the laptop looking at certain things, um, classroom management kind of stuff. Well, the important thing to know is that uh, when you're on duty, you should look for um, visitors, students that don't belong, people that are out of uh, sorts, not really sure you know, if, if uh, somebody belongs or not. If you, after a short time, you'll start recognizing normal behaviors. In the, in the event of a fight, use voice commands to stop the incident and immediately call for help. The important thing about, being, about noticing a fight or trying to intercede in a fight is to know that um, you should be careful not to physically try to intervene unless you're very comfortable with that. Um, and also know that if you do, state law protects you from assault and battery charges if you're actually trying to intervene in the fight. We have a crisis management plan that it is review, it can be reviewed for anyone. It's a countywide template for crisis management. If you could review it, it's open on the, um, the internet, intranet, and um, you can review it and you can ask, ask any questions can be answered by Dr. Bishop or Mr. Laveling Security. Many times um, students will place on uh, notebooks or through doodling their thoughts or um, plans. And it's important if you notice things like that to get them to their guidance counselor, get them to security, and we'll get them to the guidance counselor, school psychologist, and, and we can take care of the problem or at least get it started in the right direction. In the event of a crisis, what's, what's expected of you? 
Be a leader. Protect them as you would protect your family, but always protect yourself first. By being a leader, it just means to stand up, be a little bit more proactive, be a little bit more boisterous, and just be, be um, uh, more steadfast in making decisions. Keep the kids calm. Talk them through the crisis and wait for instruction. If it's possible to move away from the incident, do so. Trust your instincts. If you know that the incident is a good, it's a good distance away and you can get away from it and secure yourself, do so without question. Trust yourself and know your instincts. It's also important to know your area. Know your treat it much the same as you would your neighborhood where you live. If if you when you come home from work at night, I'm sure that when you're going through your neighborhood, you notice things are amiss. You should do the same thing when you come in in the morning, and then the same thing when you leave your classroom and you come back. Know your area. Quick glance over your area is a safety measure. Um, in the in the response to a serious incident, if we go into lockdown, put your kids away from the door and against a wall and stay quiet. While it sounds like an easy thing to do, it can be very difficult during a, a school violence incident or a lockdown. Things happen quickly, but it's important to know that if you teach with your door shut and locked, you hear the emergency button, you'll know exactly what to do. If violence appears imminent, prepare your students to survive. Fight back. Allow the kids to fight back. It's very important to know that you can instill the confidence in them throughout the school year just a short two-minute talk or a talk during our lockdown um, procedures that gives them the ability to know that they can fight back. You can fight back. And allow the kids to fight back is important. It's, and if they have that ability and they have that thought, it may save their life or your life. If the police respond to an incident at a school, they're going to direct the, the uh, response to the violence. They're going to go past injured students, past injured teachers, um, and past injured police officers if they have to. They have active shooter training. They do it consistently and one of the things they're taught are goes direct, directly to the violence. Don't assume 911 has been called but discourage cell phone use by students so if you have your phone out and you dial 911 or for another student's dialing 911 just the first one that picks up um, explain the situation to them. They may ask you to stay on the line and they may not. Try to be as calm as possible. When the police arrive to a school violence incident, they take over the incident. They, they are completely in charge over school personnel. So it may be a protact, protracted event, so wait for word to exit. Search of the building may last uh, quite a long time. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please direct them to Mr. Lavely or Dr. Bishop.